She chose God as her best friend when growing up. Now, part of the Bride of Christ and commissioned by the Father, Minister Charmaine Noel carries the good news of the Gospel to all the lands. Minister Noel and the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, welcomes you on the Highway of Holiness. God told Minister Charmaine Noel to prophesy into the lives of the people so that they may be carriers of His glory and walk in the supernatural with mighty miracles, signs and wonders following. Hello everyone and welcome to the program Highway of Holiness where it is a pleasure to be in your company to speak the very heart and mind of God to you. Well, you know, as usual, whenever I come before you, you know, I speak exactly what God has impressed in my spirit to download to you precious people. And today, God has shown me something uh, that, is, that is affecting many Christians, many saints of God, many believers in Jesus Christ. And I sense in my spirit that many of you uh, are despondent, you are discouraged, you are faced with, with a, a sense of anxiety, and it is pertaining to your financial situation. Now, I know that many of you would know that I don't really speak about finances. You would not hear me talk about money, and it's not a direction or an area that I would really, really go. And you know, the reason that I don't really go down that direction is simply because it has the, the very topic of finances, the very topic of money has just been so perverse in the body of Christ by, by the fivefold ministry that I would, I would rather not speak about it, or when I do speak about it, you will hear it being very specific because it is God really dealing with a matter. Now because many people, uh, as I sense in my spirit in my prayer time that I that many people are discouraged and despondent and anxious, the Spirit of the Lord has a word for you. And the question that the, that the Lord posed to me was this, do you think that which the people of God are experiencing right now, do you think it is of me? Or do you think it is of the enemy? Now, I think that question is a very pertinent question, and I never thought about it before because, because even in my own life, as a prophet of God, I had to go through the, a dry brook experience. And the dry brook experience, I felt as though it was of the Lord. And I never thought about the fact that, well, maybe it, the, the experience that we, we are experiencing right now, it's not God. Is it possible that it is the enemy who's attempting to steal what is rightfully ours? You know, there, there are many scriptures that have reference to what God has to say concerning finances, concerning his promises. We know 3 John 2 says that he wishes above all things uh, that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. But I am here to speak to you today. I believe by the Spirit of God, even as God has impressed upon me, that there is something that has come upon the earth, that is something that has come upon believers, and it is likened unto a seed. And this siege, my goodness, has been taking place for quite a while because the reason why you are despondent, discouraged and anxious is, is the fact that you have been told that from the year 2014, and, and you would be looking at this in 2014, 2015, and you would be looking at this and while you're looking at this, you, you are feeling this way and God has spoken and he said that in, from the year 2014, you're going to experience Experience a, a, a transfer of wealth, the wealth of the of the wicked being stored for the righteous. That there is going to be an outpouring. That there is going to be an abundance to come upon the believer. But something has happened. Instead, what you are experiencing is somewhat unto lack. Uh, many of you are saying, well, I don't even have enough to pay my bills. I can't even do w the, the basic things that I require to do on a daily basis. And you wonder, well, what am I doing wrong? Because, because you're, you're, you're tithing, you're, you're giving your offering, you are being faithful unto the Lord, you attend church, you, you do whatever you believe is right unto the Lord, yet you're experiencing a siege. It is you I'm speaking about today. God has a word to you. Uh, let me ask you again. Do you think that which you are experiencing, do you think it is 
of the Lord? Is it God testing you to prove what is in your heart? You see, Deuteronomy chapter 8 does give us an example where God would certainly test. We know that the children of Israel were tested in the wilderness. We know, my goodness, Job certainly was tested. There are times when we, when we face the test. Let me say to you right now, as a saint of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are not experiencing excess, then it doesn't necessarily mean that you are uh, under an attack. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're under a curse. That is not necessarily so. And I have to say that to you because I have heard uh, uh, an international minister say that, that, that you are not a good testimony or you're not a good witness if, you are, if you're not experiencing excess, if you're not experiencing abundance in your life. And I'm here to say to you, absolutely not necessarily so. We know that, that even when we look at the, the church of Smyrna in, in in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 8 that church when Jesus spoke of that church he said that that church was a church in poverty yet they were rich now when we look at when we examine the very word poverty there that poverty that word poverty means no excess it did not mean that they were in lack in any way and so and so God looked at the fact that they were spiritually rich and, and really he had nothing negative to say to that church we can even look at first Corinthians chapter 1 let me just read a couple of verses for you in verse 26 it says this and I'm reading from the New Living Translation it says remember dear brothers and sisters that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you instead God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise and he cho and he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful and verse 29 says, as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of the Lord. Is it not interesting that God would make such a statement? He is saying clearly here, hey, I will take those who, who are simple, those who are not filled with abundance, and I'm going to pour my spirit upon them so that no one will boast, so that you will not uh, use it upon your own list and not say, well, hey, it's because I have this and it's because I am this. God knows what he's doing, precious people. So don't let any spirit of condemnation come upon you. There are pastors, there are ministers of the gospel who will tell you that that if you are not operating in excess and overabundance, uh, that, that you are not not, that you are not representing the body of Christ effectively and I want to I want to say to you that is not according to the heart of God because I'm here to speak the very heart and mind of God and so when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 when God spoke clearly in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and he said my goodness he said he said I'm here to test you to prove what is in your heart certainly there are times of testings certainly there are times when God would cause you to withhold the things that you previously previously had uh, and, and, and let me let me just read a, a, a passage for you in Deuteronomy chapter 8 uh, this is verse 2 and it says and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and he fed you with a manner which you did not know nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that the man shall not live by bread alone but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God God is speaking to us today saints of God there is a time of testing. There is a time when God would withhold certain things from you in order to build your faith, in order for you to walk in humility, and in order for you to pursue Him uh, with all of your heart. Because it is only as you seek Him with all of your heart that you will find Him. And, and we understand that as, as saints of God, as believers in Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. But the question still remains because even as I speak, and I am speaking in the year 2014, and you may look at this in 2014, 2015, or 2016, and I am here to say to you, even as you look at this program, is what you're experiencing right now, is it of the Lord or is it possibly Satan doing something and tampering with what is rightfully yours? You know, there's a scripture that I want to, uh, to read. You know, in James, the book of James, James made it absolutely clear uh, that we are, to, we are to count it all joy. My goodness, when we fall into trials and testings as such as these, especially as it pertains to financial testings. As a matter of fact, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 11 says something. It says, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful nevertheless. Afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. My goodness, God is speaking today. And he's saying, he's saying yes, there are times when the testings would come and, and, it is, and it's to train you, it's to bring you to a place, to, to get to a different level, a different dimension in, in, in Christ. But the question still remains, precious people, that which you are experiencing right and now, is it of God? Is it what I just spoke about? Is it God testing you? Or is it possibly uh, another attack? Is it attack from the enemy coming to steal what is rightfully yours? Because I, I would propose to you today. Today I want to pose this question to you because you have to examine yourselves. Because before I go to the second half... You have to understand something. Sometimes a sin may block that breakthrough in your life. There are times, and, and, and as I'm speaking as a, as, 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 as a prophet of God, God is just speaking to me right now, and he's telling me that many people are operating with the spirit of lust in the body of Christ. Many people are fornicating. They are operating with adultery. There's sexual perversions. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of fantasy lust and perversions of all kinds. And what is happening is that these perversions are blocking uh, the breakthrough through that it's supposed to come to you. You, you. you are praying to the Lord and you are crying out to God, but for some reason it's being blocked. And I'm here to say to you, uh, to some of you, listen to me by the spirit of the Lord. Your, your, the spirit of lust, the spirit of lust and the spirit of jealousy, they are blocking that breakthrough from coming. There is a wall and the wall is that, that spirit of lust and jealousy that has come upon you and that is breaking it is blocking that, that financial breakthrough that should come to you because you're tithing, but you're operating in lust. And you may not be tangibly doing anything, but it's in your thoughts and it's in your mind. And I want to say to you, we sin in thought, precious people. And that is, a, that is very important for, for us to address before I get to the second half, because I'm telling you today, you have to hear what the Spirit of God has shown me because God has taken me into a dimension that is not of the earth. And it is because of that, I am able to say to you what is actually happening to most of you right now. Most of you are experiencing a siege. And most of you have to know that this siege that you are experiencing is not the testings of the Lord. It is, it is not your own sin that is blocking, but it is in a massive onslaught of the enemy to come upon you to steal what is rightfully yours saints of God you've got to stay tuned because I'll be back with strategies and I'll be back with a revelation that God has revealed to me what is happening in the body of Christ God bless stay tuned get your copy of today's message email us info at maptt.org that's info at maptt.org or write to us the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, P.O. Box 6057, Diego Martin, Trinidad, West Indies. You can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www.maptt.org. Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four-part series, Spiritual Gravity, The Power of Faith, and Resurrection Power. 
Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on CNC3 every second and fourth Sunday at 8.30 a.m. on TV6 every first, third and fifth Sunday at 7 a.m. Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness. MAP's Miracle, Healing and Teaching Services are every Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. The Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. Amos 3.7 Welcome back, precious people of God. My goodness, today God has a word for you. It is a word that you need to hear. It was a word that I needed to hear. We are speaking about the fact that something is happening that is causing many in the body of Christ to become despondent, discouraged, and filled with anxiety as it pertains to their finances. And God has a word for us today. And before we left in the first half, I made it clear that it is possible that when we are faced in a situation where we are with less than what we previously had financially, it could be God testing us to prove what is in our heart, or it is possible it could be sin in our own lives that is blocking that breakthrough. But there is another option, and that is which I'm about to speak. It is possible that it is an onslaught of an attack from the enemy and i propose to you even as even as the lord had taken me into a, a dimension and i'll speak to it i'll speak to you about it in a moment he had taken me in a dimension and in that place i was able to see and hear what is about to happen or what has begun to happen in the body of christ it is not of god it is not the will of god and don't think that and don't accept it and embrace it saints of god what we are experiencing now is a siege from the enemy it is a siege it is an onslaught of an attack from satan uh, to to steal what is rightfully ours you know uh, as i said before the the church of smyrna is an example a church that was poor but god felt that they were rich and that poverty meant that they were not in excess that's what the word actually means in the original language having said that now what is it that we have to look at what is important for us to identify here how do we know that when we are in a place where we are not experiencing abundance and excess, how do we know if it is of God or if it is of the, of, of the devil? Well, let me give you the one yardstick to know. If you are in lack, listen to the word, if you are in lack, then I propose to you that that is not of God, it is of the devil. Because God has promised to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He is not a man that he should lie. God can't go against his word. And so for his own people, God promised that he will meet our needs. Now, if God says that he's promised to meet our basic needs, if you find yourself in lack, precious people, if you find yourself not being able to meet, uh, you know, your, your, your mortgage, your rent, you're not able to, to take care of your children financially, financially you're not able to to just meet basic requirements then that means that you're in luck that means precious people that the, that it is of the devil it is a it is an attack of the enemy and it is not a testing of God you've got to be able to discern the difference and to know the strategies that you need to adopt to be able to to overcome uh, such a time and I believe this time that we're experiencing has gone on too long I believe it, I believe it's time for it to stop and, and the reason why it has gone on too long, it's because what God has shown me, my God, what God has shown me is the fact that our prayers are going up to God. We are crying out to God. God is hearing our prayers. But what is happening is that in order for the angels to come and carry out those prayers, they are being blocked in the second heaven. You see, there is, there is something that we need to know in the body of Christ. There are three heavens. You see, the first heaven is that earthly realm, that where we live, we dwell in that, that first heaven. The third heaven is where God and, and the angels and the trillions and trillions of angels dwell, that uh, Jesus in speaking, teaching the disciples to pray. What did he say? He said, our Father in heaven. And that spoke of the third heaven. Uh, Paul the apostle had the experience, and I'm going to read that shortly, of entering into the third heaven. But the second heaven is that atmospheric realm where 
Satan himself dwells and where his cohorts dwell. And what they do is that they form coalitions, they form unions, they join together, my goodness, and they have these meetings. And I am here to say to you that the meeting had taken place in the second heaven, and that meeting was to destroy all the blessings that are supposed to come because prophets have been prophesying and decreeing and declaring and outpouring and an overflowing of blessings to come to God's people. And what Satan has done is that he has gotten his generals, listen to what I'm saying, he has gotten his generals uh, to band together, to come together. They're not in agreement with one another, you know, but they're coming together just as it is in the Middle East. They don't agree in the Middle East, you know, but they come together to unite against Israel. So it is with Israel, so it is in the body of Christ. These generals are coming together to unite, to, to come up against the onslaught, to, to come up against what God has purposed in his heart to give his children the blessings that is supposed to come from 2014. My goodness, uh, let me read what happened with Apostle Paul so that you understand when I speak of the three heavens. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 2, it says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was caught up in the third heaven and I know such a man whether in the body or out of the body I do not know God knows uh, so Paul the Apostle look at me a minute Paul the Apostle had to experience he experienced this third heaven uh, John the Revelator experienced this third heaven being caught up and that's when he wrote the book of Revelation Ezekiel had the experience of being caught up you know in the third heaven many believers who really press in on operate in the end time anointing with the revelation experience the third heaven as I have on several occasions been caught up and experienced that third heaven and I'll tell you precious people when we understand the, the spiritual dimension the spiritual realm we will understand how to get and to hear what is taking place in the second heaven you see many people call themselves apostles and prophets and you and, and, and it's all wonderful to have the time titles but you see unless you have a revelation unless you you see it's not information that you that you speak to people that will cause transformation in their lives it is a revelation so when you get revelation and you get revelation as you see in the spirit realm and as you hear in the spirit realm and so when you get into revelation you will know those of you who are able to do that and tap into that dimension you will know that there is a coalition that is taking place to of, of generals to attack the finances of God's people, the blessings, the outpouring that God wants uh, for his precious people. You know, there's a, there's a scripture in Ephesians. I want to read this right now for you uh, because we have to understand that Satan is the prince and power of the airways. He is the one when we speak and we, we declare, uh, he's the one that wants to steal our words. He's the one, even when we speak curses, he's the one that takes advantage of the words that we speak. Many of us speak curses upon our own selves. We don't realize it. Here's what it is said in, in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 says and you he made alive who were dead in trans trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the son sons of disobedience saints of God body of Christ hear what God is saying to us you see, the prince of the power of the air is in the second heaven, and what he is doing is that he is stealing our words. He's stealing our words are supposed to go as, as, as the angels take our prayers and put them in, in, in spiritual bowls and it ascends to God and it comes as a sweet and smelling savor unto, unto the nostrils of God. And as God, as God hears our prayers and our cries, he assigns angels to carry out the blessings that belong to us. But Satan is coming and he's stealing. You know, he's stealing those prayers. And, and, and I'm not speaking now 
of those who are operating in sin and sin is going to block your words from even getting anywhere it's not going to go anywhere with God I'm not speaking about that if you're in sin and yet you are praying to God please understand he is not hearing your prayers you have to hear me I don't know why God is keep because this is not what I plan to speak about but the Spirit of the Lord has me saying this there are many of you who are looking at this program and you are in fornication you're in fornication you're in adultery and, and even in your heart your heart condition is not right with God and I'm not and, and, and listen to me God is dealing today because he's not even hearing those prayers God is dealing today with those who are faithful to God you are faithful with your tithes and offerings and you are crying out to God and it is almost as though you're not it, it, it's, re, it's reaching a block and I'm here to say to you yes it is do you know why because there is a wall the generals in the second heaven have put up a wall there is this massive wall that has come and I've seen the wall and I've seen the blocks and it breaks my heart because because many of us can't see it and we don't understand what is happening and we say oh well, maybe it is God and maybe God is testing me to try me to prove me and then what happens you go to church and the pastor says well listen God is testing you, so be faithful in the testing. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it, yes, that is a word, but is it the word for now? And it's not the word for now, because right now there is a war. There is a battle taking place. As it is in the natural in the Middle East, so it is right now with the body of Christ. There is a war taking place. And we have got to get into spiritual warfare. And we've got to take back what the enemy is taking from us. Precious people, you've got to hear what God is saying to us right now. Let me give you. Uh, let me give you the example of the one who had that experience of of his prayers not uh, uh, not being answered or his prayers being blocked. And it is the prophet Daniel. Let me read from you from from Daniel chapter ten, from verse ten. It says, "Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands, and he said to me." Oh Daniel, this is, a, this is an angel speaking to Daniel. Oh Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. Understand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking these wo this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone, and there with the kings of Persia. Saints of God, God is speaking to us. You see, there are kings of Persia, and even later on, when you read, when you continue to read in Daniel, Daniel chapter ten, that same angel had to contend with the prince of Greece. It was not just the, that 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 king of Persia. Saints of God, there are generals, strong men that are blocking our blessings. Are you hearing me? So, what does it take? What is the strategy? We have got to take the generals in the body of Christ to come together united, the real apostles, the real prophets, the one who operate in revelation, the one who have insight and foresight to speak. And as we speak with the prophetic tongue, we are going to bombard and dismantle and blow up the walls that the generals have placed upon the body of Christ, blocking our blessings. Since God is speaking to the body of Christ right now, we have got to bombard that second heaven. No, it's not God this time. God is testing all the time, but this is not it. This is a siege of the enemy. Let us now operate with wisdom and knowledge. He says, without knowledge, the people perish. And by the Spirit of God, I'm here to say to you, we've got to bombard the kingdom of darkness and get back what the enemy has stolen from us. I pray that you call the number on the screen. I pray that you write to us. Uh, please send us your prayer requests. Send us your prayer requests because we want to hear. We want to hear and we want to come in agreement concerning your matter. Let me close by saying to you that I love you with the love of Jesus and much more importantly, Jesus loves you. God bless.